Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Cummins and welcome to this video about ninjas in Korea. Now I want you to be very clear on this. We're going to talk about Japanese ninja going to Korea, not any form of Korean ninja, okay? Because in my opinion, ninjas are absolutely Japanese without a doubt. So, but there is the general discussion and we all know who we're talking about between obviously two parties who are discussing the um, sort of the origin or the idea of Japanese ninja in Korea or whether they stayed there, blah, blah, blah. But it did bring up a real interesting question is, you know, in the invasions of Hideyoshi, did Hideyoshi take Shinobi with him or did those forces go with him? So what I did is I spoke to a gentleman called um, Kenneth M. Swope who wrote this book. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read to you Kenneth's uh, bio and so you know exactly who he is. So the book itself is called A Dragon's Head and a Serpent's Tail, Ming China and the First Great East Asian War 1592 to 1598. Okay, get you closer for that. Uh, the actual, right so here's his bio. Kenneth M. Swope, an Associate Professor of History at Ball State University in Indiana and editor of Warfare in China since 1600. So the man is an associate professor, okay? So we, we, we hope he knows what he's talking about. So if you're unsure of the argument so far, um, there is a lot of discussion about the fact that Ninja didn't go to Korea uh, during the invasion and it, that just didn't happen. I personally disagree with this 100%. I don't even know where this argument come from, but uh, just to clear up the loose ends, this is what, uh, so I've done a bit of research. And I've only done research from this guy, but for me it's enough to at least say, you know, that in my opinion they went. Of course, if somebody wants to go deeper into it, they can do. So, if you don't know, uh, Hideyoshi was the in charge, he was pretty much the regent of Japan if you want. Uh, he was not the shogun, but he was the regent of Japan and he, in about the 1590s thought, I know, I'm going to take over China and then I'm going to take over India after that and uh, Koreans join me and they said no and he said right well I shall destroy you and then he invaded Korea. Uh, then um, I'll go into that in a minute. But, so the question is, did Ninja go to Korea with the Hideyoshi's invasion forces? So the author, this Kenneth gentleman says um, right, according to the Taikoki, I'm going to spell it for you, it's T-A-I-K-O-K-I. -I. Now there's no kanji for this, which is a bit of a problem when you want to research. So I've not seen the original document, but this is according to the associate professor. So the according to the Taikoki, uh, this was accomplished by a contingent of ninja who accompanied Konoishi's forces. The ninja allegedly snuck into the city in the middle of the night and started fires, panicking those inside and affording the troops outside to get a chance to close and breach the wall. Sorry, to get close to and breach the walls. So, the city we are talking about, ladies and gentlemen, as far as I'm aware, is this city here. So there's the Korean Peninsula, there it is. So the invasions come all the way up there and the ninja have gone inside this city and set fires while the outside people have gone in and they've actually uh, taken the city. Now, uh, it also says that um, in this, just out of interest and just to stir the pot, uh, it, it actually says that Korean spies were sent into the, um, the cities to infiltrate the Japanese or at least work about the Japanese. And then here on page 112, oh, by the way, the last quote was 96. Um, right, this bit. He doesn't give a kanji for this. This is the problem with this one. It says, Upon hearing that the Japanese spies were caught in the forest east of the city, the king decided to flee. Japanese spies. What? He doesn't give the source for it, which is, you know, obviously you don't have to source every little thing in a sort of, it's not pop history, it's, it's a proper academic history, but 
the problem is when you do a pop history book, you can't source every single thing because everybody knows footnotes in academic books are longer than the book itself. So what he's not done is put, what well, Kanji, was it Kan or was it Shinobi? We don't know. But it says that Japanese spies were in the forests. Sounds very Shinobi to me. But irrelevant, they still had spies. If it was Kanja, you would, you know, the argument still be the same. So there you go. The invasion of Korea. They did take Shinobi. Now, I am a bit stuck on what was the actual argument here. I'm a bit confused because, to me, it seems redundant that people would argue against Shinobi being in Korea. It seems a bit ridiculous. We know Shinobi, an absolute staple part of military Japanese forces. So it's like, you're getting on the boat and, you know, we're off to Korea, gents. Come on, we're off to Korea. And it's like, okay, all right, chaps, right? Bakers, cookers, you know, chefs. Arch, uh, Fletchers, Bowyers, yeah, Carpenters, Blacksmiths, Samurai, Ashigaru, Ninja, stop lads, back you go. No, what do you mean Chief, why aren't we going to create, no, some people are going to argue about you in the future, get back on, off you go. So it just wouldn't make sense, the entire force went, you'd be taking everything, musicians, Carpenters, workshop makers, everything would be going across. There'd be loads. So why would you not take Ninja or Shinobi no Mono, as we should properly start saying now? So uh, why would you not take Shinobi no Mono? All right. So um, in my opinion, guys, there's you know you'd have to find some severely impressive proof to say that no Shinobi went to Japan. You know, I know that's not massively detailed, but he claims there is a document about the war which claims that Shinobi no Mono, and he produces them as Ninja. So I presume he. You know, just uses the common reading of Ninja and not Shinobi no Mono, that they were in there. So, I'm sure the associate professors are right, but if somebody wants to prove him wrong, that you know, that's fine. Uh, right, another thing, so I want to go on to this book now, guys. I fully, fully recommend you get this book. I really do. And um, you don't, if you want to get straight into it, you need to go to chapter two. So, skip Prelude to War. I don't skip it, but go back and read it a bit later, as I did. And you can start on chapter three, that one. This one, you just get straight into it, you know. The first two or three chapters set up like the um, the issue in Asia and the relationship between Korea and the relationship between Japan. And I'll tell you what, it really, really, really will um, open your eyes, it open my eyes to just how much trade, how much interaction was going on between Korea, Japan and China. That, you know, all this idea that, you know, at uh, first it was like sending ninja to Korea. You've got linguists there, people who speak Korean. You've got people who speak Japanese on the Korean side. You've got treaties, you've got um, trade establishment. It's not this closed island. We always concentrate as Japan is a closed island. It's not in the Sengoku period. They're trading, they're slaving, they're doing all sorts of stuff. They're sending gold, fabrics, weapons. The lot's getting traded. So some really interesting stuff. And what it does is it gives you an amazing insight into the Japanese. and. I've not finished the book wholeheartedly, I'm about about 60% of the way through, but it's just it's covered the ninja bits, which is why I bought it and why I've made this video. But basically, so far, it's a case of the Japanese, Hideyoshi's like, right, gonna invade China, tell the Koreans to join us, Koreans ain't no, sod that. So Hideyoshi's like, next year, you're all gonna die. Oh yeah, whatever, whatever Hideyoshi, if you say so. Next year, they just send a load of samurai, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, off you go. And the Koreans go, oh Jesus Christ, run away! And the Koreans run away, halfway up Korea, the Japanese like, murdered everyone. A few courageous generals and warriors in Korea make a stand, and the Japanese just batter them up to the middle. And then all of a sudden, the Koreans start going, hold on a minute, we're, you know, right, we're shock over, let's start getting back here a bit. They send the Navy and the Japanese go, oh, we'll fight these navies. Japanese get annihilated by the Korean Navy. It's just like, what the hell? And then, of course, I'm up to the part where uh, the Chinese are now starting to send troops down. So on shore, the Koreans go, oh God, run away. They run away. Then the Chinese go, it's all right, we're coming, we're coming. Wait on, Chinese come in. And then obviously it carries on. And I'm not finished that yet, but uh, we'll get to that in the end. So, um, it's actually a very good book, guys. I would buy it. I would buy it. It's not doing great on Amazon, so give the, the author a bit of support and buy this book and start on chapter three if you want to get straight into the Japanese stuff. But prepared, be prepared to have your samurai image, like we've been trying to do for five years. Take it away, throw it away. Gang raping, um, pleasure women, mass executions, murder, torture. Oh. Proper samurai warfare, not not this sitting next to pond stuff. Actually, proper warfare as it is. It's horrible. It's brutal. It's disgusting. My name's Anthony Cummins. If you enjoyed this, you may want to read this book, which is Samurai War Stories. This is a manual from the 1650s, which is, teaches you all about Japanese warfare and uh, 
how to be a, basically a foot soldier in Japan. And if you love the ninja, you need to get this, the Book of Ninja, which is a translation of the Bansen Shukai in full. So, uh, and come and follow us on Facebook. I'm glad you enjoyed that, and I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time.